I have done everything. I have done sculpture, I have done draw drawing, painting, and right now I'm working with enamel, enamel in canvas, and I love to, to paint like huge formats. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Rhinoplasty Podcast with me, Dr. Cameron McIntosh, season four. It's fantastic. It's so good to be able to speak to people from around the world. And I've actually got a guest on the show today who was in our first season. And it's a great honor and a privilege to have one of the movers and shakers from uh, South America and Colombia, George Espinosa. George, nice to have you again. Cam, thank you for having me here. So how are you doing? Fantastic. I arrived here to Verona. Uh, we are recording in Verona. And um, we spent like two days in Venice, just now in the, the city. And everything has been fantastic so far. That's cool, man. And I'm quite excited because in just a few weeks' time, that's going to be the big international federation meeting in Colombia. Yes, we have the world meeting, federation meeting, yeah. will be in Cartagena. Uh, we already have one, like, huh, I think, 13 years ago, yeah. 2008. And we have an amazing meeting there with a white dress party in the beach and a fantastic academic level. And we're trying to do better at this time. That's cool. So, George, there are two things that I want to chat to you about. Um, and then I know you said you might want to chat to me about, about a few things. But the one is about this amazing fellowship that you and Roxana and who's the third person? Nicolas. Nicolas Heredia. have put together. Um, yes. the, it sounds really incredible. What's it been like for you? Well, the, the, the history about, about that is really amazing because we were thinking about a fellowship since, I think, 10 years, and we were growing our practice and talking about that, and we haven't done anything until, like, one year and a half before yeah. that we just met after the pandemics, and we made our minds and took the decision and did our fellowship. The The... The clue about that is to combine the strengths of the three of us, the Nicolas, Roxana, and myself, yeah. and try to build the best academic fellowship that we can. So we start talking about that, how we should do that, if we will receive just one fellow in the year that will spend the time with the three of us. And at the end, we decide that we will receive three fellows that they will spend four months with each one of us, right, right, you know, yeah. and they rotate. Wow. So at the end, we graduate three fellows, and we graduate three fellows that, like in, Jul in June, in July of 2023. And uh, we were very happy because they, all of the three, took the examination, the board, the uh, federation examination. They passed the examination, the, the three of them, and they are working right now, and they are being successful with the things that we have the honor to build for them. But around that, we built this institute, the Face and Nose Institute. Yes. In order to improve the quality of the fellow, we created this institute in order to organize meetings to improve the quality of the fellows. Mm -hmm. So we already had three courses in the year, one about nose mm -hmm. surgery, the second one about fillers and new technologies mm -hmm. in aging surgery, and the third one is about aging surgery. And we are trying to do the top of the art meetings yeah yeah and uh, the goal of this at the end is just to improve the quality of the preparation so of the fellows those meetings are they separate from the fellow fellowship program so people can come to those meetings if they want to. absolutely and then in terms of the fellows so say i mean the podcast listened all over the world if somebody were to want to apply and come and do a fellowship is it limited to colombians or is there the possibility for international doctors to come and do this fellowship. We have the possibility for other world wow. if they can go there. Okay. Just have to remember that we, we can only have three yeah. spots yeah. each year, and um, and we'll be in Colombia. So knowing a little bit of Spanish will be a very good idea. Yeah, I wouldn't be able to do that. That's that's really cool. No, it's fantastic you guys are doing that because we're also running our first fellowship uh, program at the moment in South Africa. We've only got one fellow, so uh, we'll get there one day. So, George, the other thing I'm very interested to, to hear more about is how you have brought in your artistic skills and your surgical skills and how you marry those two. Because this is, for me, very interesting that I want to hear a little bit more about art and rhinoplasty in your life. Well, um, 
My work is the plastic plastic surgery, and I love to do it. And I love the patients, the happy patients, but my passion, my real passion is to paint and to do art. So since I remember, I have been painting. And um, when you mix the art with the plastic surgery, you can get very beautiful things. Because uh, I really think that the surgeons should start learn how to see the things as an artist. Yes. Because the difference between a real, real good artist and a, a not that good artist is just the way the artists see the things. And I think it's the same for the surgeons. Mm -hmm. If the surgeons cannot see, for example, when we're talking about nose, as you know more about the nose, about the anatomy of the techniques and about the patients, you see more in the patients. If I give uh, just a bunch of pictures to a first year medical school a student, and ask them, tell me something about the nose mm. of these pictures. They won't do. They won't say anything about that. Yeah. They will say, "Well, there is a nose, and no one, no, no, yeah. no, yeah, no yeah. anything else." But when you ask a fantastic nose surgeons about uh, the analysis of a of a picture of, or a video of, or from one of the patients, they will tell you about these little nuances, like the this little deviation the resting angle, the asymmetry of the domes, the columnella. So as long as you are more prepared in surgery, you can see more. Yes. And you can see through the skin what is happening yes. under the skin and changing the shape, the external shape of the nose. So a question is, if you, the moment the patient walks into your room, yeah. you, you obviously your focus is on the face, but also on the nose. Do you already in your mind, before they even said a word, start thinking how you could maybe want to change things on what the nose looks like? Well, I really think that the first great moment of a surgery, of a nose surgery or a face surgery, is the analysis and the diagnostic things of, yes. the, of the nose. So I spend a lot of time just looking yeah. at the pictures and understanding what is happening behind the skin in order to be able to build a plan that I can follow during the surgery and at the end, have the best result I can. And I tell all the time to my fellows that this is the real, the unique way to be successful in the surgery. Because just when you compare your analysis and with the surgery mm -hmm. and with the results, you can change your next analysis for the next patient. Yes. So it's just like a round circle that will improve your skills all the time. So when you are an artist and you, well, sorry, I want to ask you, what media do you, you do in art? Is it is it sculpting or is it pencil drawings? What what is that painting? What is the art that you mostly concentrate on? Well, I have done everything. I have done a sculpture. I have done draw, drawing, painting, and right now, I'm working with enamel, enamel in canvas, and I love to to paint like huge formats like two meters for three meters, very big. Wow. And with enamel, you have the uh, possibility of spend a huge amount of Spain of paintings and you can move all your body just to the painting. So you paint, you're relaxing yourself, you are creating. And one of the main difference between the art and the surgery is that you in art, you have complete freedom. Yeah. The surgery, it's almost, I don't want to use this word, but it's almost like a jail. You cannot, yeah. you, you cannot move yourself yeah, freely. Yeah, yeah. That's so interesting. You, if you cut in a different place, you will have problems. If yeah. you put a stitch in a different place, you will have, will have problems. But when you are doing art, if you do something wrong, at the end can happen two things. You can build the best piece of art ever, yeah. just because you do something wrong, or you can just tear the paper and build another one. Yeah. So when you mix the complete freedom of the art with the restrict creativity, Soon. with the restrict rules that you have during the surgery, yes. you have a, a, a good balance in your life. Wow, that's fascinating, eh? So, okay, <laughs> I've got one more topic I wanna ask you about, which kind of ties us together is, as I understand it, you, yeah. you're very involved on TikTok. Ah, <laughs> yes. So now, here you are, this creative guy, who, in a way, Rhinoplasty restricts that, so there's this freedom of being an artist. But 
does TikTok not kind of go against that because it's, it's instant, it's quick, it's like boom, boom, boom. It's like, I don't know, I, I'm, I'm trying to get my head around it. It's so interesting how TikTok's this thing that you're doing so much information on, but then on the other side, you're doing the art, you know? How's that for you? Well, I try to separate my public TikTok life yeah. <laughs> between the art and the, and the yeah. surgery. Uh, when you are doing the surgery, when you are a doctor, I think the most important thing is not the way you promote yourself or the way you show the people the results that you are having, but the way uh, you do the publishing things. For example, you don't have to dance or do crazy things in order to get the attention of the patients. I think you have to look professional because you are a professional and the people are looking someone who can trust their lives mm -hmm. in. So you have to build everything around that concept. You have to talk like a doctor, you have to act as a doctor, and you can sometimes make some jokes. But at the end, the question of build the credibility is not about the TikTok or Instagram media or YouTube. You have to just build your personality about the professionalism that the patient needs in order to know that behind all these things, there are a real doctor and a trustful one. So TikTok, at the end, you have to build, but the TikToks, the TikToks doesn't last or don't used to last more than 50 minutes. Now you can do a little bit longer. But in this just brief period of time, you can transmit the patients something about education, yeah. some things about the whole place where you are working and build the trust that the patient needs in order to use to call you and to schedule a surgery. Fantastic. This, but it's the same with Instagram and YouTube. I think TikTok is not different. It's a little bit different the way you do the things, but the message should be the same. Yeah. George, it's, you know, it's interesting for me is it's your, the, the passion that clearly shines through your life, but your integrity as well. And I think that's yeah. really cool. It's really cool that there, there's a guy who loves what he's doing, but he also has integrity in it. So, yo, that's cool, man. So, thank you, Josh. So so guys, thank you. Eh? Thank you for having the time to come and sit and chat to everybody on the podcast again. And we look forward to seeing you in Colombia in the near future. You have to be there in Cartagena. We we we, we have a fantastic meeting and and uh, you can do some podcasts there too. Yeah. Just by the beach, <laughs> relaxing. So to be a great idea. Thanks so much, man. Lovely to see you. Thank you for having me here. Okay. Guys, make sure you come back next week for another episode of the Rhino Plus the Podcast. For those of you who are only listening to this on a podcast platform, please try and reach out and get onto YouTube because on our YouTube channel, we've got some really cool clips where I interview the guests.